say a warm welcome to all of our campuses that are watching with us, being with us today, whether you're in Pitt Meadows or at Commercial, and of course, now at Crosstown, a huge welcome to you there. You are also maybe watching online today, and we're thankful, wherever you are in the world, that you took time out of your schedule to join us. I have good news for you today. We have a very special speaker, dear friend of ours, Carl Severin is with us. And he, Carl comes from Uppsala, Sweden, and uh, there he has uh, worked at a church for a good number of years, 45 years in ministry. He has traveled to 64 different countries, and God's continuing to open new doors for his work and his ministry. Uh, he has five children, 11 grandchildren, and uh, still happily married to his first wife. Um, I know he loves coffee, and I asked him, what's your favorite food? And, and he really surprised me. His favorite food from Sweden is Indian curry, so uh, that's a sign of a man well-traveled. He serves on our board of advisors to Coastal Church. He's a dear friend of ours, so would you please join me in welcoming uh, Carl, all our campuses, give uh, Brother Carl a warm welcome as he comes and shares today. Would you stand and welcome him? I know he's got a word in season for us today. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. thank you so much. God bless you. you. May be seated. Wow, thank you, Pastor David and Cheryl, for this warm welcome and the church. I, to be honest, I feel home here in Vancouver. And you in Pitt Meadows and commercial, cross town, online, wherever you are in the world. I even watch you sometimes to one of other nations. So it's good. I, I'm a coastal church fan. As you heard, I'm married for 2,000 years already. <laughs> uh, we are very happily married, five children, 11 grandchildren. Uh, but I'm, I'm most of my time in the road. I never know where I wake up in the morning. That's the problem. Uh, because you know when you wake up in your same bed every morning. I have 165 different beds every year. And so you never know where you are. But to be honest, I love to preach. I'm addicted to preaching. I love to preach the Word of God. And, and today, I, I, I think I have a word for you. Uh, I have, to be honest, I have preached many sermons of life, but this one I have never preached before in my life. So I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm always nervous, but today extra nervous. Um, what I want to share with you is that never, never despise small things in your life. We, we can think that well, I'm just, we are a little church, we're a little group, or we are just a few people, or I'm just a little person. I, I, I'm not very significant for anybody. But you know, God chooses you. Can I get an amen on that? <laughs> you know how small things can affect things, yeah? Just, have you ever been in a room and you had one mosquito? <laughs> have you, have you fighted one mosquito a whole night? I do it all the time. In India, it's even more. One time I had 2,000 mosquitoes in my bathroom. But they have a chemical ch and they die in one second. But normally, that is, one mosquito, mosquito can make big problems for you, you know? And when you kill, I have a technique how to kill them. I put up my hands in the air. It seems I worship in the Lord, and they come and sit there, and then I kill them. <laughs> but you know, when you kill one, 10,000 come to his funeral. So... Small things can have big effects. So sometimes I think, well, we think, well, we are so small, we are so insignificant. God can choose you. You are a person that God, maybe if you are small, you are maybe not famous, you don't know, but Gideon was not famous even when God called him. But today, Gideon is famous. Gideon has an organization called Gideonites today all over the world. And there are, he spreads Bible still when he's dead. On every hotel room in the world, there's a Gideonite Bible. But he started, he thought he was the smallest of the smallest. He thought he had, he was the smallest family in the smallest tribe, and he was the smallest in his family. And God said, no problem, go in that power. Who go in the power when you are the weakest of the weakest. Well, you know, I don't know where you are somewhere in Vancouver today. You think, I'm nothing. I'm not so much. I like people who say, I have not arrived yet. People said, I have arrived. I've done it now. I'm finished like this. No, I don't like that. I like people on their knees still when they are 60 years old, crying for more challenges. I like people who said, no, I'm not finished with my life yet. God has more for me. Tell your neighbor that God has more for you. Amen. <laughs> 
There is maybe a small thing in your life the devil hates. David was a small boy. He was in, nobody knew about him. He was not even invited to the time where they're going to choose the new king. But he came in and God chose him. And when he had a small thing, I think the devil really hated his little stone and his sling. There was not, he has a sling, but he defeated Goliath with that sling. Now, there are small things in our life. Moses had a, sta a rod. That rod the devil didn't like. Uh, Paul, had, he, he liked boats. He, when he saw the boats, he was dreaming, whoa, one day I go on that boat. And one day he took the boat and he changed the whole world. Yeah. You maybe have a guitar home, and you said, Who, what, what can that guitar do? Maybe that guitar can make music. Yeah. I, I have a friend, uh, not a friend, but a friend is a friend, a friend, friend. One time went to a factory, uh, and, and he, he came to a, a factory that, that was um, making iron things, big iron factory. And there was a thrash place where there was only iron fresh on that. And, and he said, what is that? That metal, is not, nobody's using that. He said, what is that? That metal is going to be made for guitar strings. The things that nobody wanted on that factory was making music. Something you feel, I'm, I'm, I'm in a trash situation. I have a bad situation now. Hey, God sees where you are. Of that little thing you have, that little gift you have, God can make great things with that. God doesn't look for big things. God says in 1 Corinthians, that's my text. I have to read my text before I go to read when this sermon is over. <laughs> I'm sorry, please forgive me. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited about this message. <laughs> my God. Verse 26, chapter 1, 1 Corinthians, it says like this, Because the foolishness of God is wiser than man, and the weakness of God is stronger than man. For you see your calling, brethren, how not many wise, many of the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things. Everyone said, God has chosen the foolish things. That the world be confirmed to the wise. And God have chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Wow, is that a fantastic? When God looks for a person, he doesn't look. Who, I, I want to watch CEO somewhere here to find somebody. He maybe looks on somebody on the street. And God can change a person who are nothing. When nobody believes in that person. But God believes in that person. God believes in us. And God believes in you. He wants to take your gifts, what you have. Maybe it's not so much, but it's something. And God can take that little thing and make guitar strings out of you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, I preach myself happy. Excuse me. <laughs> Mustard seed in the Bible. God, God talks about, not about big faith. Somebody, oh, can you say, I wish I had big faith. Oh, I see this big man, bonk and donk and honke, all these <laughs> preachers, you know, they have big faith. I saw small faith. The Bible doesn't say you need to have faith like a mountain to remove a mustard seed. He said you need faith like a mustard seed to remove a mountain. It can be a small thing. I remember years ago when we, we came to Ukraine. You know, maybe you heard about Ukraine. It's a country far away from here. And, and you know, to be honest, I was trembling. My knees was trembling when I passed the border the first time. We had KGB afterwards. KGB means Carl Gustav is bold. <laughs> and that's what I needed that time. I carry these small little Bibles, you know, and, and I hide them. And we pray, God, don't let them. If they took us, we would go to prison for 20 years. But I said it was worth it to bring one Bible in to these people who had no Bibles. And when we gave the Bibles to them, the tears that came down, I said, oh, I will share this Bible with 20 other people. Can you imagine, now we have the Bibles 10 in each home, and we don't hardly read them. But they was longing for Bibles, for the Word of God. And they looked so small when we came in there. And at this big country, and I saw Lenin statues, and Stalin statues, and, and Red Army, and, and flags, and everywhere. And it looks like, how can you change a nation like that? But you know what? We had a small Word of God. And there is power in that Word. I said, there is power in the word of God. So when you came in, when we came with that word, well, not only me, we were many, but we transported these Bibles in. And you know what happened last year? I think it was last year. I think it was last, it was last year. It was September. 
My wife and I, we have the privilege to be in Ukraine where 200,000 people gathered on the square of Kiev, worshiping God together. I think I even have a picture. I, I had to look at this. It, the streets full and the same on the other side. With microphones, with symphony, Christian symphony orchestra, I was singing, How great thou art thy God. Lifting their hands to the living God. And the president of Ukraine declared that day, next year, this is this year, 2018, is the year of the Bible in Ukraine. Wow. 20 years, let's give the Lord a hand. 20 years ago, 20 years ago, it was forbidden to take your Bible into the country. But today there are thousands of new churches in Ukraine, in Russia, in the old Soviet Union. And hallelujah, communism is dead, but Jesus is alive. Yeah. <laughs> Lenin came and Lenin went. Yeah. Stalin come and Sta Stalin went away. Yeah. The big presents are coming and they're going. But there is one that was, that is, and shall come back. His name is Jesus Christ. I said his name is Jesus Christ. Like a little seed, he was put in the grave, but he was resurrected on the third day. And, and sometimes small things, when well, we meet small things, you look, oh, this is just a small opportunity. Can this be something here? Well, David, when he looked upon these five stones, they looked very small. But, you know, one of these stones destroyed Goliath and destroyed the Philistines. Five fishes, two breads, small things. I just gave my lunch to Jesus. Amen. And he gave his lunch to Jesus, and God multiplied it. Sometimes we give a, give a little gift. And we, we have not so much money, but we give it to God. And you know what happened? God multiplied that gift. And God give, makes it bigger. Amen. I said, amen. amen. I said, amen. amen. Hallelujah. You may be sitting there somewhere out in Pit Meadows right now. I wonder, who is this man in? Who is he talking about? I'm talking that you with your gifts can multiply the world. You may be all like the, the little thing. And sometimes small words can destroy a person. Small words of, of discouragement can destroy a person's life. You know what I regret most of everything? I'm 65 years, they say now, this year. I feel like 60, run like 20, and look like 15. No. But I, 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 you know what? I, I, if I live my life again, you know what I want to do? I want to encourage more people than I've ever done in my life. So many people are so pressed down by small little words there. And people say to them. So you know what I'm saying? A small word can discourage people but a small world of encouragement can lift somebody Amen. a hug from you to another person can lift somebody up a small little gift can encourage somebody that you come with there are so many things we can do for small steps but the small steps can be a big thing do you remember the lepers in the old testament when they were they were, were sitting there was starvation in some area there was no food and the prophet said tomorrow there will be a miracle tomorrow there will be bread in the city and then nobody believed him. But there were, there were six lepers, or maybe there were seven. They, they said, okay, if we sit here, we'll die. If we go, we'll die. Let's go dying. And they took one step. And when they took that step, do you know what happened? The army heard an army coming walking. God put loudspeakers under the feet. <laughs> when you take a step of faith in your life, God will honor that step. I said, God will honor that little step. When I took a little step into Ukraine, God opened a nation for us. When we, when we took a little step into China, God opened. Do you know what happened three weeks? I told Pastor just before the service, three, weeks, three months ago, we got a telephone call from the North Korean embassy. Have you heard about North Korea? <laughs> little rocket man, you know, you know, you know the stories. And they said, we, we are in Sweden with a delegation of 30 people, school people, deans of school, teachers. Uh, we heard you have a school of 800 children. Can we come and watch your school? And uh, of course, we are boycotted by the Swedish government. We cannot come in. Uh, and we said, of course, welcome. 
The next morning, we had 30 people from North Korea and the ambassador of North Korea in our church. And we said, this is a church. We know it's a church. For one day, they was there. We gave them lunch. We had a good time. And the next morning, they called from North Korean embassy and said, can you come down? We want to talk with you. And, we, and they, our man came down there and, and he said, and the ambassador said, we were so touched what we saw yesterday. There's such a good atmosphere in your, in your school. I said, yeah. Can you come to North Korea? We, want, we need your help with training our next generation. We are best at that. That's what God has given to us, to tell the next generation about God. So he said, well, we are Christians. We know, we know, we know. Come, 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 come. <laughs> so our man went in there. God opened great doors to be making a short story, long story short, not the opposite. <laughs> you know what happened? A great door. Not a big door, a little door was opening. Yeah. Now they called us four weeks, four weeks ago and said, come down to embassy again. I said, can you come again? And he looked at our card. You have a Christian, you're a Christian organization? Yes. We want to registrate you in North Korea as the first Christian organization in history. I said, that's no problem. <laughs> so now, today or tomorrow, he going in again and touch the nation of North Korea with the love of God. Is that wonderful? God can do miracles. I said, God can do miracles. Small steps we take. We thought, oh, just a little step. Why, why should I witness for that person? That person maybe be a Billy Graham. Why, why, should I, why should I give Jesus that? Well, that little word you give can change that purpose life. We are believing in small things. We're believing that small things can become big things. We believe that faith like a mustard seed can change a mountain. We believe when God gives us a little word, a small world, can change the destiny of another person's life. Are you following what I'm saying? Whatever you are, you may be online, you may be sitting somewhere in the world, and you are feeling, what can I do for God? You can do small things, that can have big results. We're believing in, we live in a time when everybody's big, and we want things fast. Instant coffee. Do instant. Do, 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 do. Hey, I found out things take long time. It takes long time to get an old friend. It takes long time to become a good pastor. It takes many years to become a good preacher. It takes many years to be, become a good hu husband. That's me. <laughs> Amen. We don't, we, live in, we don't live in an instant, but the small steps we take will honor us, will help us, and bring us longer with God. Can get an amen on that. You remember, Pete, I will end this too. I don't, I don't know about how many time now. Oh, I, I have minutes. Hallelujah. Now I found it. God bless you out there. And Pete Meadows, commercial and cross town. I love you. One day I will be with you also. Maybe they will send me as a missionary there one day. God bless you. But my favorite person in the Bible is Peter. Not when he was on the day of Pentecost, where there were 3,000 people came to the Lord. But when he was in a ship, alone with his friends, and there was a storm, and, and they were shivering, and Jesus came walking on the water. You remember that? And, and, and if Jesus would have said, Buh, they would all have died. <laughs> amen. I said amen. But Jesus understands us. He knows us. So Peter said, Jesus, is that you? Duh. <laughs> In Russian we say duh. <laughs> Ita ya. That means it's me. He could have said, well, no, he didn't do that. <laughs> and then I like Peter. He said, can I come to you? Jesus could have said, no, brother Peter. Only me go walk on water. Amen? You'll be in the boat. No. He said, come. Just take one step. One little step. And he did like this. I can hear his friend said, Peter, 
Don't do it. There were Swedish people in the boat, I guarantee you. Don't pass any borders here. We, in Sweden, we do like this. Oh, it's cold, cold. But Canadians, different. And they start a walk. But can you imagine? I'm so happy that Jesus didn't say, stop that. No, 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 only me. No, he said, come, 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 come. And God is speaking to you today. Take that one step. Take that little step in your life. And I know God will honor that step. You know, what's sad for me is that they never paint Peter walking on the water. All the painters in the world always paint him sinking. <laughs> I have a picture in my house. Had for years. Like this. <laughs> and I watched it. And I realized, why do I watch this stuff? A man sinking like that. I don't want to sink in my life. So I, excuse me, I put it aside. And I said to my Ukrainian friends, can somebody make the painting? And Ukrainians are fantastic. Next day there was a painting with Peter walking on the water. Amen. People said, don't do it, Peter, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Oh, I'm, I have life now. I'm walking now. I take one little step, and then he took one more step too. And you know what? <coughs> he was walking on the water. He has not read Matthew 14. He couldn't read what's going to happen. It was a new step. No one's done it before. Wow. But then, you know, you what happened. He looked upon the waves and, and he was sinking. But I'm so happy that Jesus didn't say when he was saying, oh, okay, bye-bye. <laughs> Sorry. You take two, one more step too much in your life. No, Peter felt a hand. I said, Peter felt a hand yeah. was stretching down to him and raised him up. And that's when he started, started saying, you raised me up. That's how the song was born. <laughs> so I can stand on mountains, on water. And he didn't drag him like a diver under the water back to the boat like this and put him in the boat and said, you never do this again? Stay in the boat. No. He walked together back to the boat. A little step became a, a milestone in history. Today we're reading. Today we are talking about it. If I have told Peter, Peter, if you do this, I will talk about it in Vancouver when I come there. He said, what is Vancouver? He didn't know anything about that. Sometimes we take steps. We don't know anything about it. But it can affect history. Yes. Amen. Yes. Gideon took one step. He yes, I will do it, Lord. And it changed the destiny. Today we talk about Gideon. He has an organization called Gideonites all over the world. Elisha, he took one step and said, yes, I will take that mantle. I will beat the water. And the water divided. He asked God for double anointing what Elijah had. Elijah had 16 miracles. Elisha had 32 miracles. The last miracle happen, happened after he was dead. He raised the dead when the dead man fell down on his bone. That's a strong anointing. Yeah. But he took one step. And God honored that. David took one step. Can you take a step today? Maybe a small step in your life. Maybe in your preaching, in your living, in your giving. Wherever you are, in your reaching out to other people. Maybe some of you are sitting here or listening out there. One day you will be preaching another nation. I'm here every year because I want new missionaries to go to the ends of the earth. Now God is going to open new doors in the world. We see it in the Middle East. We see it everywhere in the world. God is open new doors. And I have a word for you. If the lepers could take one step, you can take one step. If Peter took one step, you can take one step. Yeah, when he was thinking, I know that all, all maybe not in Canada, but in Sweden, when somebody fails, they say, we told you. We told you, don't go on that water. But you know what? These people in the boat never stands on the day of Pentecost one day later, a few days later, and preach the gospel. Wherever you are in the world, take one step. God will choose what is nothing. The foolishness of the world, God will choose. 
you can be used of God. And all the people said, let's stand up on our feet. I know time is running and Jesus is coming soon. And, <laughs> and we have to close the meeting now. I wish I had five more hours to talk about this. But wherever you are in this room, maybe said, oh, yes, I have that step I need to take. Do it. If you know what it is, do it. It maybe is not a, a new trip to another nation, but it's maybe a smaller step home in your house, in your business, in your relationships. Do that step. A small thing. Don't despise small things. You have something the devil hates. Something maybe small. And maybe for the first time you're here or you're listening out there through online or if you're on the other place, commercial or cross town or pit meadows, wherever you are, and you say, I don't know Jesus. But I want to make a decision today to follow Christ. So let's pray together right now. The prayer of salvation. Here in the church, coastal, or you out there, wherever you are. Because we don't want to miss an opportunity. It's a little prayer, but it will give you an eternal life. So let's pray together. Father in heaven, I come to you right now. I believe Jesus lives in my heart. I confess He is Lord and Savior. And I believe from this moment on, I am a new creature. Christ lives in me. I take that step. I want to be that guitar string that can bring music for you, Lord. I have many treasures in my life, but I leave it now, and I follow Christ. Thank you, Lord, for choosing me. I want to serve you with all my heart. In Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you. When you pray that prayer, that was your birthday today. Right now, this very minute, it's your birthday. You were born again. God bless you. Thank you for listening. Here comes today. Give him a big hand as he comes.